Hey everybody, happy Friday, and it's JJ, and we're back again for another ASUS PC DIY hardware live stream. So hopefully you guys are ending out your week on a positive and productive footing, and everybody's staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, we've got a good number of little updates for you uh, today, so we're going to get ready to jump into uh, a little bit of kind of everything. We've got actually two new products to talk about. Actually, well, one is a little bit of a refresh uh, with the Tough Gaming H3 wired headset in red. We've got an update to our actually um, gaming surfaces, our mouse pad lineup with the Scabbard 2 Medium that we've been talking about. We've got a lot of UEFI updates to talk about this week with actually, I think, close to a um, hundred and some odd number of UEFI releases for both Intel and AMD platforms that we're going to talk about. Of course, we've got some awesome builds that we're going to be checking out in the ASUS PC DIY Builders uh, Spotlight. We've got a couple of promotions to be able to go ahead and go over uh, for those of you that might be checking out some monitors. And uh, we'll probably sprinkle in uh, some general Q&A that we've got, not only from people on the stream, of course, but also uh, from our friends out there on other social platforms. So let's go ahead and get ready to kick things off here. Let's see who we got joining us in the stream. Hey, Michael, thanks so much for joining us here on the stream. Uh, hey, Joselito, uh, have, happy to have you here, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Sue, uh, also happy Friday to you, and thanks for joining us. And hey, uh, Geekbench guy, always nice to have you here on the stream, so thanks so much for joining us. And Snap, always one of the absolute best builders and modders in the game. As always, man, thanks for joining us here on the stream. Happy to have you here, so uh, fantastic. All right, let's get ready to go ahead and kick things off here in a little bit. Uh, hey, FR, thanks for joining us. Happy to have you here also on the stream. Uh, so uh, I think first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and touch on some UEFI updates. Uh, we've actually got quite a number of UEFI updates uh, for this week. And there's actually going to be some pretty interesting ones uh, here in terms of kind of just going into a little bit more information uh, than we might, uh, let's say, for like a general UEFI update. So uh, when we talk about UEFI releases, of course, this is going to be the firmware for your motherboard. Uh, it's going to help to ultimately ensure the best, you know, interoperability, compatibility and performance. And probably really the big update is going to be that there's a massive number of AM4 boards that you're going to be seeing a new AMD Agisa. Uh, this is going to be version 1.2.0.6b. And this build is going to be specifically uh, really uh, implemented to be able to offer next generation CPU support. Uh, well, upcoming CPU support is actually a better way to say it with the Vimeo X series of CPUs or essentially the 5800X uh, 3D. So that series CPU is going to be phased in with this upcoming UEFI release, which is now already available. So we're excited to continue really be a launch partner with AMD in this respect and make sure that if you're looking to maybe upgrade to uh, this very high performing and very innovative CPU, uh, you're going to be able to go ahead and take advantage of it. So I'm going to quickly show you what this looks like in terms of just uh, one of the boards, just so you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're wondering about the entire list, uh, the entire list will actually be posted up in the ASUS PC DIY group uh, a little bit later today. I'll have the entire list that will include all the different boards that are available. Hey, Erica, thanks so much for letting us know that everything is going. Okay, uh, oh, oh, great. Also for letting me know, actually, I still got some audio going back there. Uh, let me go ahead and drop that out. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, bring up, I think, probably uh, Crosshair, Dark Hero. Um, altogether, keep in mind this update is going to apply for both Intel and, excuse me, for uh, AMD 400 and 500 series boards. So that means that if you've got, um, you know, uh, X470, B550, X570, um, these boards are gonna essentially be inclusive of this update. So if you don't see your board right now, don't worry, it'll be coming in, like I said, over the coming you know days and weeks. Um, you know, when we, when we talk about UEFI releases, um, it can really vary for kind of the timeline, but in most situations when we're generally talking about like a chipset family, you generally see the majority of all the boards get covered within that chipset lineup, somewhere between about, um, I'd say a week and a half to about four weeks at the upper end if there's a lot of other boards that are concurrently also getting updates. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look here and see what it'll look like. So um, I've gone ahead and brought up here just the the, uh, the website for the um, Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. Um, but keep in mind, again, if it's going to be one of the, I'd probably say right now there's maybe close to 50, 60 uh, AMD boards that already have the update, um, then it would be the same for any one of these motherboards. All you need to do is just hover to the driver tab, once you head over to that tab, just go to the BIOS and firmware, and you'll actually see right there that the latest build uh, was issued yesterday. Um, so you can see has that AMD Agisa 1.2.0.6.b. And so if you're looking to be able to enable that next gen CPU support there with the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D, you'll be good to go. Um, so beyond that, of course, if you're going to be keeping your system identically the same and there's no changes, 
this is not an update that you necessarily have to put into your system. As always, if your system is running stable and reliable and you don't have any issues, especially if there's new Agisa, which is base firmware, um, I don't generally recommend updating the system because it can change underlying auto rules and other parameters, which could affect uh, specially tuned overclocks that you might have for, let's say, PBO or for uh, memory, um, or also even for specialized storage configurations if you're running things like RAID array configurations. So just be mindful of that. You can find out a lot more, though, of course, in our updated FAQ doc, which will be part of the post and the PCDIY group. All right, uh, so let me go ahead and also link that uh, for you, those uh, that are interested in checking out actually our group, uh, if you wanna be able to go ahead and see uh, the listing a little bit later today once we get that up. Uh, let me see if we got any questions on that side. Hey, Connor, I'm always happy to have you. Thanks so much for joining us on the stream. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome. Hey, Rusty. Thanks for joining us uh, and being part of the team Ryogen. So uh, you just picked up this cooler right here. It's a fantastic cooler, really, really cool design. Uh, looking forward to your feedback and your experience in terms of any kind of features or functionality uh, in terms of the overall experience. So uh, let us know. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the chat for you guys, and uh, we will be good to go right there. Okay. Uh, so Beyond that, uh, there is also going to be another pretty big update that we also have, which is going to be for, um, a, for excuse me, for Intel 600 series. So um, this is going to be for boards like our Z690 series, so one like you see right here, with this is the Maximus uh, Z690 Extreme. Um, so let me go ahead and bring up this uh, board, and again, we'll kind of show you a little bit of an example of what you would want to keep in mind. Now, one of the things that you do want to be mindful of when we talk about kind of these updates is going to be that uh, on occasion, we will actually release updates that also include firmware, supplemental firmware. So we talked about this, I think maybe a couple of weeks ago, um, where I talked about that there was actually like additional firmware that was for like the Thunderbolt controller and the USB uh, PD uh, functionality. But this specific new update that is being rolled out for 600 series also contains uh, firmware for the Aura RGB controller that we have on the motherboard. Some people don't actually realize that there's actually a small microcontroller that's actually physically on the motherboard that actually provides the management and the uh, functionality for essentially RGB lighting. And on occasion, we will actually um, enhance this, improve its maybe its performance. We'll do different things essentially by releasing a firmware update. So um, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So again, here, we've just gone over to the Maximus C690 Hero, but this actually update will be applicable for, I said, uh, pretty much all 600 series. So you'll see it for um, B660, and you'll see it for the wide range of Z690 series boards. So uh, again, if we get over here to the Drivers and Tools tab, um, BIOS and Firmware, you'll see that there's actually a new update right here, and uh, you'll see that it was posted on the 9th. Um, when I generally provide our kind of... Um, consolidated set of UEFI releases. It's generally whatever we've released like in the last seven to 10 days. You'll see right here that this says updates or a firmware. So um, when the updating to the or firmware occurs, you do want to be mindful that right now, if you already have a system that's working 100% without any issues in terms of your or RGB lighting, you may not want to apply this update. Um, the reason being is that it can actually then require supplemental uh, software updates within the actual Armor Crate software to kind of get everything resynchronized. Um, in most situations, you shouldn't have any issues or kind of a, a negative experience in that regard. But as always, I would make sure to read through the FAQ documentation uh, if you have questions regarding whether or not you should update uh, the UEFI BIOS. Now, if you do update the firmware, my general recommendation would be um, after it completes, load your UEFI defaults shut down the system um, and perform what's called a cold reset. A cold reset would essentially mean like unplug the power, so the physical power from your PSU, let your system idle for about a minute or two. Essentially, that's to just let the system fully discharge, plug that back in, um, and then from there, load back into the operating system, load up Armored Crate, and see if then there's a corresponding update that needs to be completed, and then reset whatever your lighting profile should be, and you should be good to go. Um, so that should get you covered in that regard. Hey, Alonzo, happy to have you here on the stream, man. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, so uh, that gets out two big updates that we want to uh, be able to talk about in terms of what we've got going on here. So give me one second <clears throat> to go ahead and open this up here. And we'll go ahead and keep moving things along there.
All right. Um, so again, you'll see this um, essentially complete list of any of the boards that feature the UEFI releases posted a little bit later today. And like I said, that will be inclusive of both the Intel series that have now that 1.2.0.6 uh, B release, as well as, like I said, the Intel series, which contains essentially just an improvement to overall kind of functionality and interoperability and performance along with that or RGB firmware. Okay. And uh, I've already gone ahead and dropped the link in the chat for those of you that are already not part of our PC DIY group. So if you want to check out the featured announcement post that has the full FAQ doc, um, then you can find out that information if you're looking for more insights in terms of if you should update your UEFI. Hey, Chris, I'm not sure what issues you're having about. We offer quite a number of different types of support options. So everything from the My Asus app, which will allow you to go ahead and run uh, consolidated tests on your systems. You then have um, live support based options where you can chat with our services support team. Of course, there's email and there's phone. We also have Asus authorized service providers in some cases. So instead of some sh shipping something to us, you actually may be able to go directly to an Asus authorized service provider. And then of course we have other community spaces like the Asus RG forum, the Asus discord, our own Asus PC DIY uh, Facebook group. Um, so quite a number of different spaces to hopefully help to have you have a better experience with your product, whatever it might be. But if you're definitely having any issues that are uh, probably hardware related, um, I would strongly recommend that you should make sure to reach out to our service and support team. And uh, the, probably the easiest way is doing it through the My Asus app, which you can either access in Windows or you can actually access on a mobile device. All right. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and see here. Hey, Mojo, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much. All right, so next up here, um, let's go ahead and give uh, another kind of recap announcement to a cool little initiative that we have going on right now, which also for those of you, I know that we always get a lot of questions regarding, do you guys have any kind of prizes? Do you guys have any type of giveaways that are going on? Things along those lines. Well, we've got our very cool ASUS Pro Artist Awards. Um, so there's gonna be an opportunity that if you guys want to be able to essentially, you know, um, submit your kind of creative uh, expressions, uh, you can definitely do that. And you have an opportunity of winning some really amazing hardware as well as actually some um, uh, some cash prizing. So you'll see right here that the actual total prizing pool that we have is actually over $100,000. There's actually cash prizing opportunity as well as you'll see that there's actually going to be physical ASUS uh, prizes as well ranging uh, across the ASUS product ecosystem. Um, it's a really great opportunity. And again, this site right here will give you all the information you need to know in terms of how you can contribute um, and how you can be involved. You can see that we've already got some very cool submissions. So it covers quite a different range. You can see from photography to graphic design to film to animation. So if you're interested in actually um, expressing your creativity and also being recognized for it and getting an opportunity to win something pretty cool, I would definitely recommend that you guys check it out. So let me go ahead and drop that link in there in the chat as well. Okay, fantastic. So uh, that gets us up there. Uh, hey, Chris, um, it doesn't make any sense that you're saying that official channels uh, wouldn't help to resolve your issue. That's what they're actually there for. They are the formal service and support channels that are coordinated with their service and support team to help to address issues, uh, especially if it's anything applicable to a warranty. No other platform or space will be able to address a warranty issue as they are not formal support channels. If you're just looking for insight or feedback, sometimes a good example of this is people, maybe you don't know how to overclock your system. Maybe you don't know how to correctly debug your system. Maybe you don't have a correct understanding of um, architecture and platforms that can present challenges and sometimes people can incorrectly assess it as being a hardware fault. A good example of this would be things like DRAM memory scaling and thinking that it could be an issue with the board when really actually the issue is understanding the way that your memory controller works and the limitations it might have. If you've got a specific question, join our PC DIY group and post uh, your question there. And I'm definitely more than willing to take a look at your question. You can also email PCDIY at ASUS.com or um, you, know, you can see actually what other feedback uh, the people in our group also have for you related to your commentary. But beyond that, if you are looking for formal support, as I noted, use the channels that I already talked about. All right. Um, so. 
Hey, Connor, I have not had the opportunity to jump into Elden Ring. I've actually got a couple of uh, some cool kind of indie RPG titles that I've actually been jumping into uh, along with some other games that I've got on the backlog uh, that I've kind of been running through. I'm definitely interested in jumping into it, but one of the challenges always for me when it comes to gaming is that I love to kind of try to make sure that I can go through the majority of the gameplay experience and the story um, as opposed to kind of jumping from one thing to another to another to another, right? So that's kind of a little bit of the completionist in me where I like to try to experience it fully. Um, so I don't like to kind of just jump into something um, just to experience it unless I absolutely have to. But I know that a lot of people have, um, you know, been pretty, uh, pretty pleased with the overall gameplay experience. So uh, it's there definitely on the, um, you know, on, on the to game list, uh, but I haven't gotten there yet. So we'll see. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and keep moving things along here with our next update. Um, so outside of UEFI updates, um, let me see here. Uh, we've got some promotions for you. So let me go ahead and drop these in the chat, guys. We've got two new uh, promotions right here. One's going to be for the PA328 CGV. So that's going to be one of our Pro It Series monitors with a $50 discount. And then another one is going to be for the XG16 AHPE, which is actually a really cool um, mobile monitor. So let me actually bring up these two, and I will drop these in the chat. Hey, Michael, I'm definitely with you. I love the recent Forza. I'm a big fan of racing games. And one of the things I like about racing games, very similar to like RTS titles, is because of the way they're structured, they're sometimes easier for me to be able to jump in and enjoy because I don't have to necessarily spend, you know, hours going in and kind of committing to a storyline or leveling up or getting to the next level or completing kind of an element of a campaign is that they can be a little bit more just for kind of purely enjoying the overall kind of gameplay experience. So I'm definitely with you there. Um, so... Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can make an adjustment right here. So on those two links for you on the monitor side. So we'll drop this one. So this is going to be for the PA. And this will be right available at a few different spots. So I will drop in the link here for those. That's where you'll find the promotion available. So, um, so an example for that monitor, you would see that it would be for Walmart, Best Buy, b and Adorama, uh, ABT and GameStop. And then for the XG, it's going to be uh, pretty similar. Uh, but the XG has got a little bit of a bigger price drop at, at $70 compared to $50. So let's go ahead and quickly just take a quick look at these two and we will uh, keep moving things along here. So let me open the, these guys up quickly. And the XG. And again, if anybody has any uh, questions, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the chat. And as we get through, hopefully, the stream here, I'll see if I can get to them. All right. So let's check out the first one here that we've got on promo. This is, I believe, a $50 promotion. So this is going to be for the PA328 CGV. Uh, so the 32 inches, nice big display, 2560 by 1440. So that's a nice step up, especially if you're still using a 1080p. With our Pro Art series, for most of you, um, really where the focus is going to be here is going to be on color quality, uh, uniformity of the panel, a rich connectivity, and ergonomics. Our Pro Art series is definitely tailored to those. Uh, that have more of, I'd say, a focus on really, really wanting something that's going to be color accurate, also have a lot of flexibility in how they can calibrate and tune colors on the monitor. Um, you're not going to necessarily get the lowest response times or high refresh rates because that's not what the focus is compared to, let's say, our gaming series of monitors like Tough Gaming or ROG Strix or ROG Swift series monitors. Um, but you'll see right here, this monitor actually does support a higher than standard refresh rate. Uh, you do actually have 100% um, of sRGB coverage, which is outstanding. You'll see that the color accuracy out of the box, it's already factory calibrated, um, Kalman ver verified, USB-C, which is great, so that if you want to integrate this in with other types of devices that feature USB display alt connectivity, that's great. Um, a high brightness rating with HDR 600. So even if you don't do necessarily gaming, uh, the benefit here with just a brighter and more dynamic panel is going to be a punchier display. Um, that's going to be really great for just giving you an additional layer of kind of content contrast improvement, and overall uh, kind of a more punchy dynamic display. Um, the uh, extension right here that you see in the naming convention also notes that this comes included with our C-clamp design, which is pretty cool because that actually is going to be an additional way that you can mount it. So here you have your traditional base, um, but with the C-clamp mount design, let's see if it does have the image here. 
Um, the cool thing is you can pretty much just clamp that directly to the corner of a desk, as you can see right here. Um, and it allows for just a much more seamless kind of clean type of setup. So um, this is a really, really great monitor. I think for a lot of those that are out there, like I said, that maybe do a little bit of both, maybe do some gaming, some photo editing, um, some video, um, some content creation, and you want kind of a nice balance to kind of be able to meet all of those things. I think this is definitely a solid choice. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and take a look here. We've got uh, with our next monitor, it's going to be the ROG Strix XG16 AHPE. Um, this is going to be a portable series monitor. So this is going to be 15.6 inches, um, 144 hertz, is also going to be an IPS ba uh, based display. Um, you have NVIDIA G Sync compatibility, which is pretty rare actually in an external monitor. Do keep in mind that that does require that the actual display output connection on the laptop support that output configuration. So that is a key item. Um, this model is also truly portable and that has a 7,800 milliamp battery built into it, which is really, really cool, which actually allows for hours of usage. Um, so that's really, really nice. Um, and integrated actually uh, kick out, uh, excuse me, kickstand. Um, and then you also have multiple other forms of connectivity. So outside of the USB-C, you've got micro HDMI. So you can plug this into a camera. You can plug this into a console. You could actually plug this into any device that has an HDMI output. So uh, you have the flexibility of being able to connect this to something with the USB um, alt display protocol support. So like a laptop, a phone, a tablet, but you could also use this pretty much, like I said, with any device that has an HDMI out. Um, this unit also has our integrated ESS Sabre DAC and AMP technology. So you get really nice, good quality audio experience, um, whether you're going to actually physically connect to it or, you know, an improved audio experience. Definitely not the same class of like, let's say, a high quality external based speaker, but definitely comfortable at being able to enjoy a gaming experience, you know, propped up and on the go. So it's a really robust and flexible monitor. I'm a big fan of this guy. Um, and the color quality and the actual brightness is pretty solid as well for an actual external display. So you can see right here the cool design. You can orient it in different configurations. So you can go with landscape or portrait. And this model, um, let me double check the promo pricing on it in a second here, um, but I think it was $70 off. So uh, a nice definite discount on this unit. So if you're looking for something to be able to kind of throw in a bag and be able to have a nice secondary display, this is a really nice choice. And I actually have, interestingly enough, seen some even users use this on their desktops and they just kind of mount it directly there on the side of their monitor for maybe something where they want to have maybe, you know, chat. Maybe they want to have a secondary field of view for, let's say, email or for just other items, but without necessarily going to have a whole other second monitor that takes up more space. Okay. So uh, that is going to be a cool addition that we have right there. So uh, give me one second right here and let me reconfirm. Yes. So that model, the XG16 AHPE is going to be off for $70. And then the PG328 CGV is going to have a discount of $50. So make sure to take advantage of those guys while you can. The promotions are active just until the 13th. So that's going to be um, essentially just until Sunday. So if you want to take advantage of them, take advantage of them right now. All right. I would definitely agree. Uh, it's definitely a very nice base design. Um, in terms of, um, so yes, Geekbed guy, you're asking um, speakers. It does actually have speakers. So right here, the um, the XG16 AHPE, it actually has integrated front firing speakers. So they're really designed to allow you to kind of go ahead and just set this on your desk, right? Or set it wherever you're going to prop it up and have those speakers directly firing at you for a nice, actually, level of sound. Uh, like I said, I've tried it out in a couple of different configurations and definitely it's comfortable and it's nice for being able to watch a lot of dialogue. So YouTube videos, video on demand services, or even like I said, connecting um, over another device and then having, you know, your gaming audio actually be uh, pushed back to you there. So that is definitely a nice level of, of flexibility that you have available to you. And you'll see that it actually gives you, um, if you go over here to the tech specs, if anybody's kind of wondering about all the other specifications, um, they're all built in there there. And keep in mind, we've got a full lineup here. We literally have, you know, an extensive lineup of MB monitors. I've talked about these occasionally in the past, but we have everything from 
14 inches to 15 inches to 17 inches. We have models with touch. We have models without touch. The ROG monitors are all about high refresh rate and really giving you a high quality experience externally for gamers. And they're all going to be pretty much IPS-based displays, high refresh rate. A lot of them are going to have those battery technologies in there. Really, really nice options. Um, and you can even see for a response time, it's pretty impressive. Three milliseconds is actually very good. Um, you're very rarely find actually laptop displays, um, whether they're going to be portable or whether they're going to be built into a panel that will have less than that. And very commonly, actually, the response time on a lot of traditional CDs can be 15, 20 milliseconds or even higher. So um, this is actually quite good when we talk about the performance for a portable based display. So it is really going to be kind of comparable to what you would see within a kind of good quality. And um, while it does also have those speakers, it does also have that earphone jack and that earphone jack would be provide a benefit if you did connect a analog set of headphones because it does also have that ESS Saber DAC and amp in there, okay? All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get ready to keep moving this along. Let me see right here. Um, not sure right there. I'll, I'll double check to see if I can check on that question there in a moment. So uh, let's go ahead and now um, give you also another update. Remember, guys, I'm going to drop this other link here in the chat. Um, but we also do have our Asus uh, bundle and promo section on our website, which launched a little bit earlier this year. Um, I think now some users are still not aware that we have that. So do keep it in mind. So this does get continually refreshed. You'll see right here that we have. Um, monitor and GPU bundles, right? So you can save some money there if you want to be able to go ahead and pick up graphics cards and monitor combinations. Um, and these are all going to align with our MSRP prices. So there's no essentially price increase. It's just the pricing of those two items combined together, essentially, uh, although you do get a bundle discount. Um, beyond that, if you also do check here at the top, there is also, you're going to see right here, there's bundles and then there's deals. The deal section also will occasionally have different updates. Last time we had a few monitors that were there in terms of the bundle section, excuse me, in the deal section. Um, and let me see right here if I can. Yeah, so you'll see right here for deals, we got some laptops going on there. And we still actually have a really nice display. Uh, it's the same one, the VG27 AQ L1A. This is one of my favorite all around 2560 by 1440 high refresh rate displays. So, um, and $80 off. That's a great promo price. So, okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, keep moving things along here. All right, let me see here where we're going to go next. Uh, let's go and talk a bit about, uh, I guess, uh, the new products that we've got coming out here. So we've got um, a new, actually, gaming surface. So this is going to be an update to the current one that we have, which is going to be a bit larger, which is going to be the ROG Scabbard 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, hey, Gameaholic, thanks for giving us the feedback there in terms of CRTs. I don't think that we're going to be seeing CRT production come back anytime. I know that there's definitely still some benefits um, and some really amazing characteristics of LCDs, but you know we're definitely going to continue to evolve and support the latest technologies that we have relative to, you know, um, I think actually a wide range of uh, monitor uh, technology. So whether that's going to be, you know, OLED, whether it's going to be micro LED, whether it's going to be mini LED, whether um, you're talking about different types of backlight technologies, you know, more advanced refresh rates, backlight strobing, there's so many different things that are being looked at. And there are, of course, inherent benefits as well to um, multiple aspects that you also have in relation to um, LCDs. So, so um, you know, at that same time, we're definitely going to be committed to, you know, look at a lot of different options and make sure that we have a really big portfolio for you. So hopefully wherever you're going to be looking at, you'll hopefully be able to pick out a monitor in the ACs lineup. So um, let's take a look right here. We've got the RG Scabbard 2. So we'd already offered this model for a little bit. Um, and one of the really cool things here is that the uh, Scabbard 2, right, it's made of a specialized actually woven material um, that actually has a very, very high level of performance because it features actually a specialized nano coating. And the nano coating, as you'll see right there, it's resistant against water, oil, and dust. The big benefit that you have with this is that a lot of people actually, oddly enough, have a challenge that when it comes about to cleaning um, you know, a, a mouse pad or kind of a gaming surface, it's kind of one of these things that a lot of people always ask how to do it. So having the coated actually helps to create um, 
resistance against any of those things settling in into the actual textile itself. So it makes it much easier that you can really just wipe it and be able to have a smooth and consistent experience. Um, and you don't have to kind of worry about anything settling in there. Um, and you'll definitely see uh, there's feedback from users in our group that have had a great experience with not only the first generation scabbard, but now also with the scabbard too. Um, this is also going to be very smooth. So if you're somebody that's really looking for kind of the equivalent of the really smooth um, tracking experience that you might normally have on something like a finished surface, um, then definitely you can mirror that here. This is, I would say, very comparable to, I'd say, a hard surface type of mouse pad, but with the flexibility that you have with a textile-based mouse pad. Uh, high quality construction in terms of the anti-frayed stitches. Um, all those things are going to be the same. So the big thing that you're going to see right here is that this is the new addition. So we have the scabbard, which is this larger model right here, which has been available and now we're going to have this guy, which is going to be the Scabbard 2 Medium. So if you were looking for something just a little bit more compact, um, this will be the model for you. It would be coming in at a $10 price reduction compared to the larger unit. So $39.99 versus $49.99. So it'll be coming out in the not too distant future. And I think I've got... Um, you can actually see right here, here's the full kind of comparison information verse, versus the first, first generation and the second generation. Um, all that information is noted for you right there. Okay, and I think, uh, do we have some gallery images here? These are a little bit on the darker side, but uh, hopefully you guys can see them. You can see kind of the dimension difference. I might have actually a cool little scenario shot. So let me see if I can bring that up for you. And you should see availability probably um, around the very end of this month, moving into next month, okay? Uh, yep. All right. Cool. I've got two two shots for you. So this is actually the Scabbard 2 right here. So you can kind of see it in relation to this is our Gladius 3 mouse. So you can see it's not super compact, but this is also going to be nice. Maybe if you've got a little bit of a smaller desk or maybe you also want to be able to travel with it. It's a little bit more friendly in that regard. So that is going to be the Scabbard 2. Yeah, I definitely would say uh, <laughs> if you're worried about any uh, <laughs> uh, dust there, uh, whether it's going to be from food or kind of ambient, you know, dust debris and dander, um, definitely this is your friend where it's going to be easier, where you can just kind of just wipe it off and have a very clean, nice surface. All right. Yeah, if you're looking for a big one, then go with the scabbard, right? So right now we already have the scabbard. We also have the sheath. The sheath is going to be much, much larger um, in terms of actually a gaming surface. Um, and the sheath also comes, I think right now we have the sheath in four different colors. So if you want to go with a, something that's going to be bigger, go with either the scabbard um, two, which is going to be just uh, quite a bit larger, or you can also go with the, um, the sheath. All right. Okay. Very cool. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, actually, let me go ahead and drop that link in there for you guys. If anybody is interested in checking that out. And uh, I can drop the link there. Also, let me go ahead and just drop the link in there if anybody is interested in the sheath. So. Okay. Should be going in there. If somebody can confirm for me that that link for the sheath and also for the scabbard went through, that would be great. Just because I got a little bit of a um, error message there on terms of actually sharing that. Okay, so that would be cool. Okay, next up, um, I think actually I have a sample of this one right here. We've got an update. It's going to pretty much be just this version. It's just going to have a red accent to it, so it's not too much of a difference. Um, Yes, uh, Chris, I can definitely link you that app. Give me a second and I will link you to the My Asus app. You can download it through the Windows Store if you're on a Windows system. And if you're, of course, on an iOS or Android device, though, you can just search for it in the respective stores. Uh, but it's going to be this updated model right here, the Tough Gaming H3. This is definitely one of my favorite headsets for the money. Um, I think in terms of the overall kind of quality of the overall um, the base extension and also the mid-range and even treble, it's very solid. It's not overtly heavy. It does have a little bit of kind of a pronounced base curve. So it does give you a little bit of a kind of an extra bump there, uh, but it's not crazy. It's not overdone. 
It's a comfortable, pretty actually lightweight headset. Um, it's built well and it's very reasonably priced. Uh, so um, this update right here, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. It's got a nice integrated yoke system right there that adjusts very easily. Uh, this is a metal metal based yoke design. You've got your, of course, your adjustable boom. Um, it does feature, of course, your traditional 3.5 uh, connection. So it's an analog based headset, um, but I'm definitely a big fan of this guy right here. And uh, I will show you uh, the update that we've got right here. So give me one second. So this is going to be the Tough Gaming H3. So uh, here's the model right here. It's going to be the Tough Gaming H3. And right now we currently essentially offer this version, which is going to be the one that's pretty much just black and has the silver accent. Um, but we also are introducing this model, which will have a red accent. It's not a huge difference. You'll see this is already very, very reasonably priced at $39.99. So this is not an expensive headset. And I definitely feel comfortable telling you that if you're just looking for a nice, good quality headset, that like I said, is going to be good for music, movies, and games, the mic is of reasonable quality. Um, it's actually pretty clear. It's well pronounced. You want to make sure and of course adjust it accordingly because it's a boom based mic. Um, it's lightweight, so it's not overtly heavy. The clamping force is reasonably done. It's a very solid headset. Again, for only $40, I think it's a really, really good value. So um, let me go ahead and go back here. I will drop that link in there as well. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, but it's a 50 millimeter drivers in there. So those are nice and large. Um, that's gonna, like I said, help to give you that lower end frequency extension so that you get nice, clear, well-defined bass. Um, you do have the ability to go ahead and have virtual surround, not through any software that will supplement because this is an analog based headset, but you can easily do that through Windows, um, either through Windows Sonic or utilizing things like DTS, DTS, X or Dolby Atmos are packages that you can purchase and actually supplement through uh, Windows very easily. Um, we already talked about the toughest, uh, the tough stainless steel yoke design right here. Um, the lightweight nature of the headset. Let me go ahead and give you the exact weight right here for this guy. And you'll see 294 grams. So that's quite a bit lighter than, let's say, take for instance, this headset right here, which is going to be the RG Delta, which is over 300 grams. So I think that definitely for those that um, really want to wear a headset for a long period of time, that is going to be a nice option for you. So again, this model is already available right now if you want it in silver. But if you want that red version, be coming out a little bit later, uh, probably towards the very end of the month, uh, probably rolling into early next month. So that is going to be the Tough Gaming H3. Um, and I didn't show that right here. I can show it a little bit closer if somebody wanted to see it. But um, if you do actually take a look, you'll see right here that you do actually have some nice little adjustment options. So you have the volume adjustment right here. And you also have the uh, quick toggle for the microphone. So that's a nice little button. You just tap it right there. And then you also have that volume adjustment. So um, pretty much it. Not too much to talk about, but a nice little addition that we've got there for a model that we already have available. Okay. A uh, question right here is saying is why can USB headset be better? Um, so it actually really varies. The benefit of say something like this with the USB headset, so like the ROG Delta or the actually ROG Strix Fusion 2 500 that we talked about last week is, is that generally those will actually usually have some form of DAC and amp built into the headset. And so one key benefit that they'll offer is that the audio quality can be more tuned specifically for the driver in relation to that essentially sound chip or that sound card because it's built in part of the actual headset. That's if it's done well, not every company will do that, but I can tell you that's actually how we design and develop something like the Delta or the Fusion 2500, um, those headsets that we have that are USB based. So we optimally kind of pair that experience. And it also means that the experience is more consistent between devices because you're not leveraging the sound, sound essentially sound card or sound chip um, or DAC amp solution that is on the device you're plugging into. So for instance, if we took this right here, the Tough Gaming H3, uh, it's, a, it's a very good quality headset, but the sound actually will vary depending on how you plug it into different devices. If I plugged it into, let's say, this motherboard, this motherboard has a nice quality audio design built on board with an ESS Sabre DAC and app built on the motherboard. 
that will help to improve the quality and the overall experience of this. But if I was to plug it into, let's say, a laptop or a very low quality motherboard that doesn't have a good quality audio experience, it would actually produce a lower quality sound, right? Um, so that's the kind of tricky part is that a USB based headset, I'd say in some scenarios, can actually be more consistent than an analog based headset. But an analog based headset can also work the other way. If you've got a very good quality sound card, you can actually sometimes elevate and really get a better experience through your headset. Whereas you can't necessarily modify uh, the experience with a digital based headset. Although you still will generally have software adjustments like things like an EQ that you can play around with, okay? Yeah, so um, on the H3, there's no sound card, right? But on this Delta, this Delta actually has an ESS Sabre DAC and amp. It actually has a quad DAC built into the headset. And so that's the reason why it's a native USB-C headset. So we plug it in, it's registered as a digital audio device. Okay. All right, uh, so let me go ahead and Chris, um, I said I was gonna give you that link. So let me go ahead and just bring up the My Asus app. Uh, Chris, I've gone ahead and dropped that link for you there for the My Asus app. And like I said, you can go ahead and get the app um, if you're gonna be looking for it for, um, on the mobile side, right, from different sources, right? So you can just go directly to kind of your Play Store and you can download it from there if you need to, okay? Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and uh, move things along here. And let me see what we've got next here. So we've got our Tough Gaming H3. We've got our Scabber 2 in terms of some new products right there. Um, let me go ahead and see if I've got it here. Probably going to see if we can answer a few uh, questions that we've got from Instagram from our Ask Asus segment right there. Um, and if you guys have any other questions here before we get ready to get into the PC DIY Builder Spotlight, then feel free to go ahead and drop those in the chat there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got those loaded up here. Give me one second. So I think otherwise. Uh, we got through pretty much everything there. Uh, we got through our Pro Artist Award announcement right there, our update in terms of AF, AF, uh, excuse me, UEFI releases for Intel and AMD boards, um, gave you guys the updates on the Tough Gaming H3 and the RG Scabbard, our monitor promotions. Yeah, so I think we've got everything out of the way there. All right. Hey, Mojo. Yeah, actually, we showed off uh, that guy right there. Yeah, this guy. You want to get this one right here, right? <laughs> the ROG Chakra Max. Yeah. So we actually did a little bit of a quick tour on this guy last week. Um, this is pretty much getting ready to actually roll out in terms of channel distribution in the next, uh, I'd say, um, probably about the next couple of weeks, I would probably say availability would be towards the very end of this month, getting into the beginning of next month. So again, if you're part of the ASUS PC DIY group, there'll actually be a formal announcement when we get, once we get confirmation from our product management team that it's pretty much being pushed out to our channel partners. Um, but right now we're just pretty much finalizing a couple last couple of things there in terms of kind of some of the firmware tuning and some pieces like that. But it, you should be getting ready to see this show up in terms of North American availability by about the end of this month, early next month. So make sure to keep it tuned if you're going to be interested interested in the Shocker Max. Okay. All right. So let's see here uh, what questions we might have. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay. And let me see here. Give me one second, guys. Oh, we've got a lot of questions that uh, came up in there. Okay, that's that's good. I'm always a fan of additional questions. Okay, so first up, uh, let's say... What do you think about this combo? 5600X and then a 2070, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a B550 motherboard. 
Um, sounds actually like a very solid combination. I mean, a 5600X, it's a great CPU. It pretty much is going to not um, have really any overall limitations. It's going to be able to be really well um, uh, suited towards pretty much any type of workload. So even if you're doing something that's more multi-threaded as opposed to lightly threaded, um, it's going to be a solid part. It's not too um, demanding in terms of actually cooling, especially when you're only talking about general gaming and general productivity. Um, 2070 is still a very solid base graphics card for pretty much just about any game and will actually still allow you to run quite a bit in terms of games at a higher refresh rate. So you could be targeting things like 144 uh, hertz. Um, you also have support, of course, for RTX and higher IQ sweatings. Um, so I think it's a really solid foundation. I don't think you would probably change anything. Some people might say that you may need more memory than 16 gigabytes, but that really depends on your kind of desktop usage. Overall, I think that's a very solid, very solid foundation for a system. So um, no issues there. Let's see. Another question we got here is going to be USB-C power for gaming laptops like Strix docks, coolant pads, or gaming laptops. Interesting. So I think I'm not 100% sure on what this user is asking here in terms of kind of USB-C power for gaming laptops. So on many of our newer laptops, they do actually feature USB connectivity. Um, and they some of them will actually also even offer um, Thunderbolt. Um, and with the Thunderbolt enablement, you also do have, of course, a, I'd say, higher than normal uh, power output standard. But because USB protocols are designed a bit differently than, say, let's uh, say like a traditional power adapter, which might provide power, you really want to actually make sure of what is going to be the requirements for the dock or the device that you're going to be attempting to connect. Um, take, for instance, some docks, they might have specific um, operating requirements. Take, for instance, like a USB-C dock is different than a Thunderbolt dock because USB-C can work at 5 gigabits, 10 gigabits, 20 gigabits, um, or of course, upcoming USB 4 at 40 gigabits. Thunderbolt actually works a little bit differently, although they both can be USB-C. They have different actually levels of bandwidth that are sure to them. Thunderbolt generally being higher where it's guaranteed bandwidth, whereas in USB, uh, it's not necessarily guaranteed, so you have to look at the specification support. You also have to confirm whether or not it would support display output configurations. So there's a lot of kind of permutations that you kind of have to think about. But the best thing you can do is just double check the actual device that you're looking to utilize and make sure that it's compliant with the port that's on the system. And we do detail that in the spec information. So hopefully um, that answers your question there. Uh, let's go ahead and answer one other question right here. This user goes, is I want to buy an Asus ROG Strix B550 uh, with an RTX 3060 Ti and then a Ryzen 5600X. Is that going to be okay for streaming? I'd say overall, that's actually quite a solid choice that you're going to have in relation to streaming. Um, the big question that you probably have to ask yourself is going to be, what do you want to use for actually the streaming? So with this type of system, you actually have quite a number of different options. You could stream purely on the CPU, which would be CPU-based encoding, which would sometimes cause a drop in performance. Now, having a 5600X gives you a good number of cores so that you could balance between gaming and streaming at the same time, but you would still see some drop in system performance. Um, the benefit, though, of having a discrete GPU is that your GPU does have hardware, what's called encoding and decoding support. In that respect, if you were to utilize the GPU for the encoding and for the decoding, um, you would essentially almost have no loss in performance. And so it actually wouldn't matter too much which CPU you kind of went with in that regard. Although the base CPU that you selected is still going to be a great pairing kind of with your 3600. So you kind of have to make the decision on what you want to stream with. Some people have a little bit of a preference more for CPU encoding because it can provide a little bit sharper and cleaner quality than sometimes GPU encoding. But I think the most recent GPU-based encoding mechanisms are actually quite solid and good in terms of the overall quality. So um, it really comes down to a choice uh, on your end, OK? All right. Um, we'll maybe take a look at some other questions a little bit later there. Um, and we'll get ready to jump into this next segment here. So let me see here if we've got anything that's uh, popped up. OK, uh, doesn't seem like we have anything there, so I'm not going to worry about that. So let's get ready to, I guess, go ahead and jump into uh, our next segment, which is going to be our PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So uh, for those of you that are not aware, essentially what we do with the PC DIY Builder Spotlight is we love to be able to showcase your ASUS PC-centric build. So it doesn't matter whether it's your first time build, doesn't matter whether it's... <coughs> 
and air cooled, water cooled, mini ITX or ATX. We'd love to feature all types of builds, new or old as well. So uh, if you're interested, make sure to join our PCDIY group and take advantage of the submission form so that you can have your system featured on the ASUS PCDIY live stream. All right, guys. So um, I've got one actually a little bit of a call out that I do want to go ahead and bring up here before I we get into our formal submissions. And this was actually going to be from a community member that was actually talking about a little bit of an upgrade that they were going to be doing to their system. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool system. I would love for you to share it anyways. So let me see if I have his photos here so I can get them loaded up. Uh, yeah, and I've got a little bit of some notes here from his system as well. Okay, great. So let's see here. This is going to be from uh, Ray, Ray D. Renzo. So Ray D. Renzo actually had, uh, let me go ahead and bring up the actual images here. We'll go through what he's got for the system. All right, so let's take a look here. So we can see we've actually got a Xeon here, which is pretty interesting. Not that many people build, especially with a Xeon, although this wasn't not and this was not a gaming focused system. Let's see, we've got some Corsair uh, DDR4 memory right here, or is this DDR3? Um, we can also see right here. Got his system prepped, and we actually have a water cool. And the cool thing is right here, I can already tell you, this is uh, going to be um, a little bit more of a specialized blocks implementation right here that he has present. Um, so he's actually water cooling the VRM. is also water cooling the chipset. Oh, and there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is the Rampage 4 Black Edition. This was one of my favorite boards. I remember actually working with our design and development team on the actual specification and overall design on this board. It was really a kind of a special board where we wanted to do something really different. It's one of the first times that we went with a full kind of really extensive flat black monochrome design throughout the motherboard. Um, it had a lot of really cool design implementations on it too that were really cutting edge for the time um, and kind of really showed the design leadership as always that we have year to year with ROG products. Uh, you can see that really impressive, even audio design uh, back from that generation with the Supreme Effects isolated audio design, uh, the audio grade capacitors, the WEMA based caps that we have on there. Uh, so many of the kind of the ROG design elements right here, but you can see that really cool beefy, um, of course, water block uh, that we've got right there for the CPU. Then we've got one for the VRM. Uh, and then of course we've got one down here, which would be for the chipset, right? And here we have the actual system. So you can see this is definitely kind of a storage centric system. Um, very, very cool. We've got water cooling set up for the actual CPU and for the GPU. Um, you can see right here, simple pump and res down here, all set up to go into that radiator. This is the kind of build that actually I'm a really big fan of. It's kind of sim simple, clean, and effectively done. Kind of just built to be able to give you the benefits of water cooling, right? And not necessarily go crazy and everything else. Now, um, you know, definitely you could argue that there might be, you know, more aesthetic things to kind of do. But from a functionality standpoint, I love the way that this is actually laid out. It's just accessibility for your drives. He still has managed up and cleaned up those cables well. Simple and effective runs right here for the actual CPU uh, integration. So right there going from the VRM, I uh, got the CPU and then, then going into the chipset and then also going in here into the GPU, all taken care of with that uh, radiator, which is more than sufficient to be able to cover a GPU and uh, the motherboard and the CPU. So it's all done in there. Uh, it's definitely a cool little setup and I'm a big fan of it. So... Um, cool system. Uh, definitely get props for me. Um, I was a fan of it. Like I said, this is not a full builder spotlight submission, but I thought just kind of a little bit of a cool kind of throwback based build um, in terms of just seeing kind of a little bit example that might be something a little bit different. Um, let me go ahead and just see if I've got some notes right here uh, from him that he sent over from it. Uh, so yeah, he had an uh, E5 2680V2, and then he yeah, was running DDR3 2400C10. Um, he was, of course, running that at a lower speed, 1866, and that's due to the memory controller being locked on the Xeon platform. You didn't have that. Um, prior to the using the Xeon, he was actually using a 4930K, so that's why he had faster memory that was present on there. And then he had the full EKWB kit for the water cooling uh, setup. And he's actually still using this in his personal Unraid server, but he's going to be actually upgrading this in the not-too-distant future to an ROG Strix X570-E with a 3950X and then 128 gigabytes of memory. So a pretty big upgrade 
Um, but that's actually a really great choice for a lot of you that might have those older systems. You know, two big recommendations I always give is one, you could turn it into an easy kind of storage server. And another option is you can actually turn it into a Chrome uh, desktop system, which actually I find is really cool um, in terms of kind of having a secondary system and allows you to kind of try something else different than maybe your Windows-based platform that also doesn't require a lot of power um, and can be very simple and easy in terms of kind of just its user experience. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at our first submission. And uh, let's see what we're gonna go with first. I think we're gonna go with ROG Hype Beast. So let's go ahead and get this system loaded up here. All right. And uh, let me go ahead and bring up the submission form. Got the submission form here. All right. Uh, some of the images here are not sized perfectly, so we'll have to kind of tweak them a little bit, but let's go with it. All right, so we can actually see first and foremost here, we've got uh, ROG Hype Beast by Jonathan, and this is gonna be a pretty cool build. So we can actually see first off, this is using the ROG Helios, um, but it's got uh, some customization to it, right? So we actually can see that we've got some um, patterning on the actual chassis itself, which is pretty cool. This is also custom right here with some integrated illumination. Um, we've got some hard lines in here. Actually, not too excessive. I like the actual dual colors that we have here with the kind of the pink, and then we also have black. Uh, and then, of course, we have some figures that are in there too. But very nice and cleanly done in terms of the overall layout. Um, nice bends right here uh, in terms of these 90s right there. I like that this area is still exposed to be able to see the ROG. And I like the choices here in terms of the lighting where we've got kind of white here, a little bit of black. Um, and then from here, we've got black and then also white. So we're playing around with contrast. It's not a white build. It's not a black build. And it's not a colored build. And it's not even a heavy RGB build. It's really kind of the theme system to be able to kind of purposely use specific colors and kind of tie them all together. And I actually really like the overall way that this turned out. It's clean. It's well executed. So let's go ahead and keep taking a look here. I dropped in some cool little numbers here. looks like some performance numbers showing us that he's got over 20K in terms of his numbers here for his time spy score. So that's always cool. And uh, of course, uh, props, right? In terms of that, uh, his ranking, right? So uh, happy about that, right? And let's go ahead and take a look at some other shots right here. So you can see here, we've got a little bit more of that kind of RGB lighting uh, flare going on with a, probably a little bit more of some kind of... Um, softer kind of warmer tones that we have playing around in the system that I think work well. I like the gradient on the memory that's been done here. That's definitely a nice add-on. And we can actually see that he's taking advantage here of uh, the actual VGA brace in there. So just to be able to kind of subtly not look super, super apparent, but that it is present there just to help to reduce any type of card sag. But you know, with the Helios, it'd be pretty rare to have the uh, card sag. And the interesting thing too is that these right here that he's got his figures on are actually braces for the graphics card. Um, but he's got those instead. He's actually using that for mounting positions of his figures. And then he's got a secondary brace right there. So that's kind of cool. Um, very nice shot right here. And we can see a little bit even closer up that we've got uh, some really cool coolant fluid in here. I wonder what this actually is here. Um, and then we can see we've got frosted tubing. And then along here with this looks like kind of a satin uh, matte finish there for this tubing. Um, of course, you can see that's moving down there after you've got the course reservoir, um, got your fans set up all in there, and then he's got some type of customized plate in here, which is really cool. It kind of gives this little subtle lighting effect in there that's pretty nice. I'm definitely a fan of it. I, I really like the way this turned out, and he gave us another kind of look here in terms of going all white as opposed to previously where he had the RGB lighting. So um, I'm wondering kind of which one I like more. Do I like the one with a little bit more of the lighting or a little bit more of this white? And I think it almost depends on my mood. So um, one cool thing that you may not be aware is within the Aura RGB software, uh, Armory Crate, you can actually set what's called scenario profiles. So you could actually have different RGB lighting profiles for different applications. So if you went into your desktop and were just opening up your web browser as opposed to into an email client, as opposed to listening to music or jumping into a game, you could actually switch your RGB profiles um, between any one of those and have them be different um, for each one of those applications. So that's actually a cool way to kind of um, have your, I think, RGB experience be a little bit more varied as opposed to kind of just being locked into one kind of scenario. 
Oh, definitely a lot more lighting going on here. And this is definitely interesting where now we've got a little bit of the yellow. Um, and then that's working off against, of course, the, uh, the, the pink kind of purple vibes and along with the black. That's a really interesting look, too. Um, I love this kind of specialized cutout that he's got down here at the bottom. Overall, that's very, very nicely done. It's a cool system and definitely gets a thumbs up for me, man. I'm a big fan of this overall um, kind of look and feel that you got in your system. I think it's a really nice lady laid out system and it's overall clean and definitely well, well, well executed. Yeah. It looks like they're in the background. Um, I think Evo, you're right that there's a, a Nissan Skyline uh, GTR that we've got there in terms of the wallpaper, but overall very, very cool. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can bring up his submission form here and see what we've got going on. So um, see, this was actually his first build. Wow. Um, that's a definite thumbs up because I'll tell you in terms of the overall cleanness, the balance, the balance nature of your overall kind of uh, theme, um, your overall lighting and the quality of your bends. That's a definite thumbs up and a great job, man. So hats off to you. Um, definitely. This is quite a bit better than a lot of people's first builds. So definitely you get credit. Credit is uh, credit is due. So man, definitely um, kudos to you. So does it have a theme? Yes, an ROG theme, as is kind of apparent there. Uh, three words to describe the build, clean, calm, and cool. Uh, the name of the system is ROG Hype Beast. So in terms of kind of core hardware, we've got an ROG Cross 8 Dark Hero, a 3080 Ti Strix card in there that's water-cooled with an Optimus water block. He's then running that actually with an XG27 AQM. So that's our ROG uh, series monitor. That's a high refresh rate, 1440p base monitor. Claymore 2 keyboard, which is actually this keyboard that I've got down here, which is our wired wireless keyboard with the swappable numpad design and the uh, optical RX switches. And then he's got the Chakram, the same mouse I've got right here. That's an awesome gaming combination. Very, very cool system and pretty much flagship level performance right there, right? Uh, budget all the way around for, I think, everything he's got in there. He notes is being around 7,000. Uh, what aspect uh, was he most proud of was able to place one with the same config uh, he was able to get actually a one ranking with the same configuration times by while being able to maintain the beastly aesthetics so i i get what he's saying here so essentially being able to have a tune system that could produce really really high performance right that he was able to of course benchmark in times by but also have it look cool like a like a legit gaming system as opposed to just being kind of overclocking centric right um so yeah you kind of get the best of both worlds right is there anything that he would change about the build? Um, maybe change the GPU stand to the wing wall. So I think right here, what he's talking about is that uh, this little brace right here is that maybe he would want to use the wing wall. And uh, let me see if I can bring up the wing wall. Do I have an image of it here? Let me see. Give me one second here, guys. And uh, I think I have an image of the wing wall. Ah, uh, yes, I do. Okay. Um... So this is our upcoming um, ROG specific um, Sentry GPU brace. So this one, he could slot that in there and it's got that little RGB vibes in there. So this could definitely fit. And I think it actually would look nice in his system. So that definitely would be an option. The other one, of course, that we have is the ROG Herculix. So these are both are going to be coming up soon. Um, so yeah, that I, I think I could see that. That's a cool little addition right there. And let me see right here. It took him about two months to be able to get everything all together and then to the point where he was satisfied with everything. Pretty much uses the system for gaming. So um, let me go ahead and get his system back up there. Pretty much uses it for gaming. Apex Legends is his primary game along with Warzone. And his favorite feature uh, in terms of ASUS is going to be the dynamic OC switcher technology, which is on the dark, Crosshair Dark Hero. So it's a really cool feature in terms of overclocking. Part of the reason probably why he was able to get such great performance because he could kind of tune the system to be able to give you great multi-core kind of frequency performance, but then also really maximize a lighter um, kind of single frequency focus with the kind of specialized PBO tuning through like curve optimizer and things along those lines. So overall, man, hats off. This is a great build, especially for a first time. I'm a big fan. I like it. All right. Uh, Geekbench guy also gives you a thumbs up. Uh, hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining us on the stream, man. Appreciate you joining us. 
Yeah, I definitely, it does have a little bit kind of a subdued vibe where I think it's like not super heavy compared to some systems that have RGB, but I'm pretty sure if you're probably next to it, you probably have, I think definitely a bright value to it. So it wouldn't probably seem as subdued. Maybe a little bit of that is the, the photo as itself, but I think that it's well balanced, right? So that it's not like it's shining light in every corner, which I think helps to kind of give you a nice focus feel to it. So I definitely would agree to you, agree with you there. Hey, Lex Luther, um, feel free to go ahead and take a look at our Asus PC DIY product release calendar. It has all of the products right now that we are essentially uh, have announced but haven't released yet that will be coming out in the not too distant future. In terms of the monitor, I believe you're talking about that's going to be the upcoming OLED series monitors, the 42 and the 48 inch. We don't have any new updates yet, but you're probably not going to see anything relative to availability until sometime in Q3. But if you are part of the PC DIY group, as well as, of course, watching these streams weekly, you'll see any updates on any new products that we're going to be actually releasing. Um, and we'll also provide updates in terms of the product release calendar in terms of expected timeline as I get that information. And I generally update it about every seven to 14 dice. Okay. I would definitely agree. Uh, it's a very strong uh, first build, right? Um, to me, it would definitely look like somebody that's had a lot of experience, especially I think with the quality of the bends. All right. So let's go ahead and move along to our next build here. Let's see who's next up. Mm, going to be, what are we going to go with? Let's go with uh, SFF. I haven't seen um, a cool little small form factor build in a little bit, so I want to go ahead and show this guy off. So let's go ahead and go with a No Name by James. James is submitted a very cool little small form factor uh, mini ITX based system. I'm a big fan of always seeing kind of what users do in terms of kind of the creativity of how they approach uh, doing a smaller form factor system. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, oh, got these pictures a little bit out of order, but I think it's okay. We'll make it work. So we can see right off the bat, of course, we've got an ROG Strix-I series motherboard in there. And we also have an ROG Strix LC series cooler that's in here as well. Um, very tightly, <laughs> very tightly um, uh, implemented, right? In terms of that, you've got a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> pretty much not that much space available to you. And that's always, of course, one of the challenges with a small form factor build, right? Uh, but you can see once it's all buttoned up, it's going to be very compact. Of course, you've got a chassis that's got a lot of venting right here on the side and on the top, which is going to be critical because essentially with a tight... Uh, um, a tightly spaced system like this, you definitely want to try to make sure that you're bringing in and exhausting uh, air to be able to make sure that you've got stable and reliable operation, right? Uh, you still do have a little bit of that RGB lighting vibe that's going on there with the pump housing, although it's not really that visible, so not that much of an issue there. You can see that impressively, though, this chassis does allow for a full uh, Tough Gaming graphics card, which features our triple slot cooling design, uh, as well as going to be a larger than standard, of course, uh, graphics card in terms of the actual the number of slots that it occupies. So impressive that you're able to have a high performance mini ITX board, high performance GPU. And then, of course, you can even see that Strix LC240 all within that compact based system. So that's pretty cool. And there we can see, we get a little bit of that lighting vibes. I can see how that once the lights are turned off, you have that, a little bit of that accent lighting on your desk. It gives you a little bit of kind of additional presence. I can feel that. And then we can see right here, he's got his nice setup there, which actually includes two um, monitors on a nice arm setup right there. And then also looks like he's got uh, the ROG Strix Impact 2, one of my favorite mice that we have in our lineup. It's Nice, clean, compact, good uniformity in terms of its ergonomics. Um, pretty lightweight, right? Um, and you, it's wired and wireless. I'm a really big fan of the Strix Impact 2. So you know what? You get an extra thumbs up from me on this build. Really nice setup in terms of the overall desk with your actual mini ITX small form factor build, the two monitors, and then you've got your uh, Strix Impact. It's definitely all thumbs up for me. And there we can see it also lit up looking good man um it's nice and you can see this is one of our newer boards because it's got the revised design down here that we also have present to be able to give more flexibility for the way that m.2 uh gets installed on this system overall very cool uh let's go ahead and i don't know which shot to leave it with i mean his cool little setup shop works there let's go with with that let's go with that one for right now okay 
let me go ahead and bring up his submission form here and let's read a little bit more of what we got right here. So this is James's system um, and not his first build. Uh, does it have a theme? Yes, it was actually an ASUS centered theme. He was looking to be able to have uh, three words to describe the system is high end SFF, which I definitely think is the case. No name. Um, core hardware is we've got the Lan Li uh, A4H20, which is going to be the chassis. And this is running our latest generation ASUS Z690-I. So our latest generation based um, Z690 mini ITX based motherboard. He's got a 12700 in there, the KF. He's running 32 gigabytes of 5200 megahertz DDR5 memory. He's got a tough 3090 graphics card in there, the RG Strix LC2 240, and then a 1000 watt 80 plus Silverstone SFXL power supply in there. And then two ASUS monitors, the VG28UQ L1As. Great. Those are nice high refresh rate monitors, 144 hertz. Uh, no budget that he had to find for the system. Um, and then from there, he was most proud of being able to get the cable management overall um, well well controlled and well managed. And I would definitely give him credit there because as we can see right here, we don't have any cables really kind of eating into any space, causing any type of key obstructions that we would have. So overall, I think this works out really well. Um, you could say that if you want a little bit more space, I mean, these cables actually from Silverstone are not that bad. They're um, kind of individually strand, but they're still together. Um, and they're pretty flat, so they can actually be stacked pretty easily, which is one nice thing compared to sometimes other types of cables. So they work pretty well. About the only thing you could argue that maybe you could consider doing would be going with custom length cables um, for a mini ITX system. But the way that he was able to route everything, I think that that's actually not a necessity. I mean, nothing is impacting in terms of overall key access right here. Um, it's not being obstructed in terms of the actual um, airflow for the radio that's uh, mounted at the top, and there's nothing that's affecting the graphics card. So overall, I would agree it's a well-managed system in terms of the cable management. Anything they would like to change about the build? Yes, he would like to change the PSU to our upcoming ROG Loki, um, but they're not out yet. He would also like to change the GPU to a Strix card to be able to complete the ROG-based theme. Um, you know, the Strix card would look fantastic, but the reality is you can't see it in there. Um, you do get the benefit that it would be able to have a little bit higher performance, and it would also, of course, be clocked a little bit higher um, and it has that higher TGP and TBP uh, board power. But, you know, the Tough Gaming 3090 is already faster, cooler, and quieter than the FE card. So I think a year fine. I wouldn't worry about um, making any changes. Took about two to three hours, which that's actually pretty impressive for a small form factor build. Uses it pretty much for gaming. So Warzone, Halo, and Lost Ark. Um, he's a big fan of the Tough Gaming card just for the overall 4K gaming experience and that uh, high resolution gaming experience he's got for the two monitors that he's got. So overall, man, um, James, I'm a definite fan of this system and this overall setup. It's nice. It's clean. It's well executed. So definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Oh, hey, Joselito. Uh, awesome, man. Looking forward. Thanks again for being part of Team Ryogen. Looking forward to that, man. <laughs> I must have the ROG Strix shoehorn to fit everything in that chassis. Yeah, definitely. It's a little bit of a challenge sometimes to be able to get everything in these really small form factor chassis. Um, but I will say that one of the cool things that you do have, at least with this board, is that, um, you know, with this specific motherboard, the Dash I, all the M.2 is here at the top. So that's the cool thing, at least about this trick build decker design, is that the audio board in the M.2 is all here on the front as opposed to having to worry about anything in the back. Um, so from an accessibility standpoint, I think it's a little bit easier to work with. It does present its own challenges in terms of clearance. I know some people kind of like, oh, hey, there's not as much clearance for some coolers. But as you can still see, you can still utilize a high performance. We've got our ROG Strix AIO working on this board and you are good to go. So you can still definitely get kind of everything you need to uh, within this type of system. Uh, but overall, man, James, thumbs up for me. I like it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next system here. All right, what do we got next up? Um, let's go with, I think, a very kind of cool and interesting system um, from Critical Error Computing. So this is actually from a system builder that's gone ahead and submitted their system. Um, they've actually been featured a few times here on our stream. They do some really cool and kind of interesting builds that I definitely think are 
not the standard that you'd expect necessarily from kind of a, um, a system builder. And definitely with this build, it's definitely a bit out of the norm. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I really liked it and definitely credit to Nathan and the CEC team for doing something that felt kind of different and had a really cool and, a cool and interesting kind of aesthetic to it. So uh, let me go ahead and get this system loaded up here and we will get this moving along. So uh, I think the name of the system was something like Robot Head. Yeah, Robot Head. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here at Robot Head. Bring up his submission form here. All right. And there we go. Okay, so let's see here. So right off the bat, you can definitely already see that it's invoking that kind of Robot Head vibe. It's got a cool, interesting kind of design right here where you have this central illumination kind of strip right here, which is really cool. The two panels right there, and then these kind of two eyes, and then whatever's kind of going on back here, which almost kind of gives it a little bit, for me, like I'm thinking a little bit of kind of owl vibes, but I can also still see that robot head vibe. I'm getting kind of a little bit balance of both. Um, but it's very interesting. I definitely, these kind of things right here really do kind of have an interesting look and feel to them to kind of add depth and kind of intelligence in there um, because they're not just kind of just like an orb. There's a little bit of kind of contrast. There's some uh, pixel lighting. There's some kind of diffusion that's happening there. So it makes it really kind of interesting. And definitely these large steel plates are very really interesting and cool. And then of course you've got your front IO right there. So right off the bat, very interesting. Let's try to take a look here at the side. Uh, number five is alive, right? <laughs> hey, eyes of uh, buys. Uh, happy to have you here. Um, no information for you as far as anything that we're going to be doing on the RG phone, but as always, make sure to keep it tuned to our ASU social channels for any updates, right? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, see here. Looking at the back, we got a lot going on, but you can see good still accessibility for all the I.O., which is stacked on this motherboard, which is nice, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 ports. And that's not even counting your front ports, right? So you got lots of ports. Uh, then you got right there, right? So another set right there. Uh, you got your Wi Fi. Interesting, these are going to be different wireless antenna than what we would traditionally offer. Um, this is also something interesting here. And I saw this in a submission form, but can anybody guess what this is? This is actually a power conditioner built into the system, which is pretty cool. Cause I can tell you for my personal high-end systems, I'm always an advocate of having some type of AVR power conditioning um, because actually the variance in terms of the quality of line level power in your home can be actually quite variable, can actually introduce quite a number of different things. When we actually do power analysis testing in our lab, you'd be surprised the number of time situations are presented that don't have anything to do with the hardware, but because of the way that you actually have a regulators in the hardware, they can be present in the hardware, making people think that it's a hardware issue when it's actually an issue with uh, power variability or power quality that you have coming into your home, especially apparent for kind of odd little niggles that you have with certain overclocking or certain kind of sleep and hibernation functions. There's a lot of kind of interesting things where it plays a part. Um, but let's go ahead and keep moving this along here. Oh, very interesting. So different angle gives you a little bit more of kind of that perspective right here, right? This is kind of cool and interesting. I'm digging that. And then we can see got two power supplies right there. And this looks like, seeing to me, this is cool. This looks like the drain. So um, that's always nice. I'm always a big fan of seeing kind of what's a realistic implementation of how you could actually drain the system and being able to have it be accessible. So for the user, this is nice because it still allows them to be able to make sure that they can easily drain the system without having to get into the rest of the hardware, right? And also with them going with soft tubing, it still allows you to get an interesting look, which I think kind of goes with the theme. Um, but on top of that also is easier from a maintenance perspective, right? If anything had to be changed or adjusted or whatever it might be, um, that's a nice option. So um, I'm a fan on that side too. So there you can see a little bit more clearly the power conditioning. You can see they did take the time to go ahead and cable manage all of those different items. You got your RGB controller right there. You've got all your different cables, but everything is nicely zip tied and cleanly done. So kudos there, which this is a challenge always when you're talking about an open um, system. You got flow monitoring built in there. So that's nice for um, 
kind of the end user perspective if they want to be able to verify that. Although I don't know if they took advantage of the water uh, water cooling zone headers on the motherboard because our motherboard, this motherboard does have water cooling inlet, outlet, flow, and temperature uh, headers. So that can all be monitored actually directly within our software, within the operating system or within the UEFI. So you don't need physical um, items like these, but I know sometimes people like the way these look. Oh, and I really like this shot. This shot is cool with a different kind of like different color right here. This might be my favorite shot. It definitely gives it a very interesting vibe. So all the way around, this is a very cool and different system. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of it. This is just it's just fun to be able to see something that's different and it's not kind of the same as everything that you see out there with the same kind of chassis, right? Um, so this is a very interesting take. So uh, credit where credits due. Let's let me go ahead and I don't even know necessarily where to leave it. Let me. I guess go with that. I think there was also some other shots that he didn't even submit here that I would have liked to have uh, present there. But um, let me go ahead and bring up the submission form here. So give me one second. So let's see what we've got right here. Uh, again, this is going to be from Critical Era Computing. Um, this was a uh, theme was robot head computer. Three words to describe the build is robot head computer. Um, does the build actually have a name? Excuse me, it's Critical Prime. So I messed up. I, I put Robot Head Computer, but actually the name is Critical Prime. So this is actually C Critical Prime. Um, so our current, uh, so he notes that the client came to us wanting something out of this world, focusing on form first and then performance. And we searched through tons of cases and aesthetic options until we found the uh, FST T wings, which would be the perfect kind of skull for the robot head design. And um, that's pretty much what they used as kind of a baseline. Then from there, their team uh, spent the time to kind of be able to draft the design together and be able to kind of bring it all together to be able to offer a system that had a, a high level of performance, an interesting design aesthetic, right? And ultimately, you know, have that be a functional working system, right? And that's what you actually ultimately got. So they wanted to have an armored mask. So they ordered three millimeter fluid cut aluminum armor plates. Um, so that's what you've got right here is these aluminum plates that are in the front. That, those were actually custom cut. Um, then the custom visor would be cut from 2.8 millimeter semi-translucent blue acrylic. So that's what you have right here that's at the top. That's pretty cool. And then to mount the visor in the mask, we would print custom pressure fittings for the top and the bottom of each side. In keeping with the bulky aesthetics, our artists designed custom intake vents that would be print to slide into place. That's very, very cool. So I think that's actually what you have right here, right? With these, these are custom 3D printed. So there's some kind of combination of modding fabrication and kind of general purpose components all being brought in together into the system. So that's pretty cool. Um, rather than to hide the cables, we selected extensions and splitters that looked like nerve clusters when bundled. And when we were done uh, selecting the motherboard block bridge and GPU combos, we decided that we wanted to avoid using standard light strips or LED fans since everything else was self-lit. Um, lighted tubing was the way for us to illuminate the overall uh, water cooling loop. Um, which I agree, that adds a definitely a nice element to it. And also doesn't necessarily make it feel so kind of RGB PC, right? Where it's got a little bit of that self-illumination vibe like a system, right? Like a robot might have. So that's overall pretty cool. Um, so lots of custom hardware that we've got on here that we talked about. Um, let me see right here. It's a 5950X that's in there um, on a Crosshair 8 formula, a tough 3080 graphics card that's also water-cooled, 32 gigabytes of memory, 4,000 megahertz, 850-watt power supply in there along with an 650-watt power supply, the Furman AC215A power conditioner, um, a 2-terabyte PCIe NVMe drive, and then another 4-terabyte drive that's in there. Uh, the vast majority of the water-cooling hardware in there, we've got EK, some Alpha Cool, and some Barotech, Mayhems for the actual premix, and then uh, fittings are looks like a mix of monsoon and a few other items in there. And then fans, is he's using our ROG Strix XF 120s, man? Nice, definitely, uh, definitely cool there. So, um, overall, this is a really cool build. I'm gonna go ahead and just go through one more time to gonna uh, get a little bit of uh, lay of the land here from the front to the back. So, again, these were all custom, this was custom, this was custom right here. The power conditioner right there, the dual PSUs right there, right? The illumination they've got within the self-contained system, the res right there, which is pretty cool. The drain port right there. 
overall gets a definite thumbs up from me, man. Nathan, nice job. Hats off to the entire Critical Error Computing team. Uh, Michael, let me see. Yeah, cost of the build of the system. Let me go ahead and see here. I know that they actually did uh, quite a number of upgrades for the user. So um, I don't know actually what the total cost ended up being uh, outside of those items that they ended up actually giving up. So let me see right here. 10,000 would be the total cost uh, for the system right there. But, you know, you account for, like I said, a lot of the other items that they upgraded in there. Um, there's quite a bit of additional hardware that they added in, right? Plus all the custom fabrication, right? Um, is there anything they would change about the build? No, it took about five months work. Uh, it's pretty much only used for gaming. And they're a huge fan of the crosshair with the EK bridge function. Um, and a shout out to the XF120 fans, though. Those things are amazing. So thanks so much, man. Appreciate your feedback in that regard. Again, Nathan, um, this is a really cool build. And definitely for me is um, a really a nice combination, like I said, of seeing a little bit of everything, right? Especially from a system builder. I think it does a great job to be able to show attention to detail, creativity, and flexibility to be able to, like you said, meet form, meeting function. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at the next one. All right. So next, what do we got right here? Um, hmm. Uh, let's go with Oni from our mods. Okay. Let me get the submission form up here. All right, so uh, right off the bat, we can see that we're dealing with definitely something a little bit different, um, and definitely where the name comes in, definitely it makes sense, right? Um, of course, we can see that represented right here with this mask uh, with already some cool, interesting detailing right there. Of course, the black and the red's got a really nice kind of combination in that respect, a really nice kind of detailing there within the mask. Oh, just went next level, right? We had to have the max light up. So that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty that's pretty cool. I like that. Evo says spicy. I think, uh, yeah, that's a good way to uh, note that. Um, pretty cool. Maybe for some people, a little bit creepy, a little bit scary, but I think it's actually pretty cool looking. Um, here we can see we've got a very cool and interesting kind of setup in terms of the way that the chassis is laid out along with the rest of the hardware right here. Um, along with looks like to be, uh, this is the reservoir and with some interesting bends and some runs in there. Okay. And here we get another shot. Very nicely done. This is pretty cool. Uh, interesting, of course, we're having a non-traditional mount in this type of system right here. So you can see that it's an inverted base design. So the motherboard is actually uh, quote unquote upside down. So this is going to give it a little bit of a different design aesthetic where normally you would see the motherboard kind of in this section. It's actually all the way down here. Um, I think a really interesting choice and a, and a nice choice to go here with these kind of polished chrome fittings that you have there that adds that nice kind of pop there as a focus along with then the red. And then you've got a lot of this black. And then there's a little bit of silver in there, right, to create the accents. And then I think when the lighting comes in, that helps to even play around with the rest. So I think there's a nice color combination that's at play here. An interesting choice to go with the G-Skill. Um, remember, I think this is G-Skill Royals um, there. So I want to see how that looks like when it gets lit up. So let's go ahead and take a look there. I would agree. Some definitely nice bends there, especially these bends right here. Uh, these can definitely be a challenge, right? Uh, and this is actually a pretty smooth, nice, clean bend right there. Um, so comes comes in, that nice U-bend, and then we get another nice, clean bend right here. And these are deceptive. These sometimes can definitely be a bit on the challenging side, but they look nice, clean, and uniform. So um, definitely credit there. The only thing that, you know, calls out to you a little bit is some of the logos, of course, being, you know, in that quote unquote not correct position. And that's just one of the challenges you have with an inverted base design, but it still looks really, really good. Um, you know, for me, I think that's the thing that throws it off though, because we have right here the T Force, the ROG I logo upside down, and then the G Force RTX upside down. But that's what you're gonna have to deal with when you go with an inverted base mount, right? Um, but overall, the layout I think looks really good. And I like the way that the white light 
um, catches against everything else. So you can see the white right here that we have from the fans, a little bit of backfill lighting right here, backfill lighting, and then from the memory. Um, so um, overall, very, very cool aesthetic and a nice layout and overall feel to the system. So um, overall, nicely done. Let me go ahead and let me see. I guess we'll settle on that pick for right now. But that takes away that you don't get to see that beautiful shot there in the front of uh, the system where you get to see that customization. So let's uh, see what we've got right here in the submission form. Um, does the build have a theme? The Oni, it, it has a 3D printed Oni mask on the front panel. Splatters with red color to mimic blood painted on the front panel and other areas with red as well. Uh, three words to describe the build. Could look creepy, <laughs> I would agree. Uh, does the build have a name? Yes, uh, we noted there already. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at the key hardware components that we have within the system. Um, so give me a sec here. Oh, and actually I found a oh, cool. So um, let me see if I can show you this guy's, this shot. So we have another shot here from his build GG submission uh, where that actually shows you a little bit more where you can see that really kind of nice shot right there, right? Yeah, that's a very nice bend right there. Our mods, definitely a nice job. Okay, so let me uh, bring up back up. Uh, we'll go back with this image for now. I mean, go ahead and finish taking a look here. So this is uh, with the Ryzen 9 3900X. It's on an uh, RG Strix XI70-E, um, uh, 16 gigabytes of 3600 tri Trident Royal in there. He's got a, a 3080 uh, water cooled, of course, and then a 250 gigabyte, a 970, along with a one terabyte, um, 2.5 inch SSD, all powered via an ROG Thor 1200 watt power supply. And that's inside of the Be Quiet Silent Base 802. He's got the Be Quiet Light Wings, seven of them in there, 120 millimeter, and then a good amount of pretty much all water cooling hardware from EK. So Coolstream SE, XE, PET Jubing uh, from EK as well. And then of course, FL120 D5 um, that you're gonna have there for the pump res combos. And, Yep, uh, Quantum Torque Nickel is going to be there, which you're going to have for the fittings. So overall, very, very nice um, in terms of the overall cooling hardware. Uh, he was the most overall proud of the kind of the way the theme came together, which I would agree with. Nothing that he would note in terms of changing about the build at this time. Took about two months worth, worth of work. Uh, it's pretty much used for gaming. So uh, Final Fantasy, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Control. Um, he's a huge fan of the design and the aesthetic that we have on our motherboards. So overall, definite thumbs up, man. It's a creative, um, distinctive design, which I think is always fun. Um, it's also different. You don't get to see that many systems that use an inverted base design aesthetic. And there's definitely some nice purposeful bends in here. So um, I would agree with Geekbench guy. Excellent work. Thumbs up. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next build here. Oh, you know what? I Actually, for our next build... I forgot I needed to get these images downloaded here. So give me one sec. I've got it. This is uh, from a user who I needed to get some additional images from him. And they were able to send it to me last minute. So let me go ahead and get his submission form here. And get these images together. Okay. So... Okay, do I have it here? Okay, so I got one image and hold on. Sorry, guys. Uh, let me go ahead and I think I've got a couple of other images that he sent over to me. Oh, here we go. Okay, I got them. Okay, so we got four images right here. And this is going to be from Zachary. And um, I don't remember if Zachary actually had a submission. So give me one second here. Let me see if he had a full submission form. Oh, he did. Okay, cool. All right. So this is, is there a name here? RG Nater. Okay, let's go with that. <laughs> All right. And uh, this is going to be from Zachary. 
here we go guys let's take a look at zachary's rd nature system all right so we can see here this looks like it's an rg helios looks pretty cool um, and looks like this is an, a modern system. So we've got Z690. This is actually looks like it's the same motherboard I've got right here, which is the Maximus Extreme board. And also has a Ryogen 2 cooler in there. Got some G-Skill um, RGB DDR5 in there, along with an RG Strix white graphics card inside of a white silver Helios and the Thor. This is a pretty cool setup because the white, of course, gives you a little bit of kind of... Um, more reflectivity internally in terms of the way that the system looks. And then you have the black that's going to be present on here. So you have a little bit of a different kind of feel instead of it being all black, right? So the white is going to give you a little bit more reflectivity. It's going to bounce light around, going to give you a little bit of a brighter feel. And then from there, you've got the black, which helps to pull things back and have a little bit more of a pronounced lighting effect, which is kind of interesting. So that's kind of cool in terms of kind of we have a mix of both white and black in there. Uh, he's added RGB fans to the front and to the rear right here, along with uh, fans to the Ryogen, which is interesting because this doesn't come with these fans, doesn't come with this fan, and it comes with standard black fans. So that also means it's going to have a different look at the front of the chassis, where the Ryogen normally has a nice... Um, actually a uh, tempered glass panel, which has its own design in RGB. But here now you're gonna have two layers of RGB, which some people like, some people don't. I can be a fan of it um, in both configurations. I tend to like it without the fans, in terms of RGB fans, but it can definitely work. So overall, this though is very clean and well executed. I like the look, I like the actual aesthetic. I like that it's also a little bit different than you know, your standard kind of synchronized theme where here he's got kind of one color theme going for his components. And then he has a secondary color theme for his components. So it's got an interesting little vibe to it. So um, here he sent me over some supplemental shots. Sadly, he left the tempered glass panel on here, but we can see that nice shot there of the OLED live dash display. Nice clean layout right there. You can still see the enemy matrix display on there. Okay. Here we got another little bit of a shot right here and really clean on the cable management. So all the cable management done really, really nicely. Uh, like the way that the streamers have been implemented there. So that's all nicely clean and done is also, uh, um, also. And here you can see, so he's actually got the Gundam edition Helios, which is pretty cool. And there you see where I can talk about where it does have the um, visible, of course, Gundam mech that's present there. And then the RGB lighting behind it, which is just cool. It's almost got like this kind of cool two-toned effect. So I think it works. Um, you'd probably see the Gundam mech a little bit clearer if it didn't have the RGB lighting on it. But I think that this kind of design ties into the whole theme and aesthetic. So I think it looks cool. So um, it does get a thumbs up for me. Overall, I like the system. It's cool. It's clean. It's well executed. And it's functional, which is definitely what I'm all about. So um, let me go ahead and see right here what we've got in terms of the submission form. Give me a second here to bring this up. All right. Um, where did I? Sorry. Trying to see if I can find his submission form. Okay. I've got his submission form right here. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and bring that back up there. Okay. So this is going to be uh, from Zachary. <clears throat> Not his first build. Um, did the build have a theme? ROG Gundam. Minimalist power, three words to describe the build. Um, does the build have a name? Is the RG Nature? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's a 12900K with an uh, Maximus Z690 Extreme, a white Strix 3090, uh, G-Skill 6400 uh, megahertz. Well, not megahertz, but it would be MT, right? Um, 16 by 4. Um, so actually, I don't think he's running that memory configuration. Normally in this situation, um, actually, I would tell you to drop to two dims because you can't run four dims um, at 6400 MT. The highest that you could generally run um, would be somewhere between about 4000 to 4400 MT. Maybe if you had a really good IMC, maybe you could get up to 4800 MT. But to be able to definitely reach 6400, which, which is already higher than the standard, most IMCs for 12th gen series CPUs can get up to about 6000 MT. Um, and then they can go a little bit higher than that, but that's going to be probably about around 80-ish percent of those CPUs. Um, and then as you go to higher and higher frequencies, 
the memory controller can still definitely achieve it, but it's not going to be consistently as achievable as it would be with a lower value, like 5,600 to like 6,000. So 6,400, I don't know if you're going to be able to get there, but if you want to be able to, to get there and really maximize that, you would want to drop down to two gyms because that's only achievable in a two dim configuration. So um, while it's cool that you've got that memory kit configuration, um, unless you wanted to have just the look and feel of having those four dims be illuminated, my recommendation would be to drop down to only two dims so that you could get more performance out of your system um it's got a thor 1200 watt in there and then he's also got the asus helios gundam edition chassis 9700 was the overall budget for his system um what was he most proud of is that overall kind of how it all came together i think i would definitely agree it's got a really nice overall cool aesthetic to it anything they would change about the build he would like to add the chakram x and the herculex to the system in terms of the overall additional items to kind of round out the build and the setup Took him about two days to put it together. Um, it said it's about been 10 years since his last build, man. So kudos, man. It's fantastic to be able to see somebody like you, a PC DIY enthusiast who's been away for so many years and now be able to come back and be able to put together a really awesome system like this. This is going to last you a long time as it's truly a high performance, uh, impressive system. Pretty much uses it for gaming. And his favorite feature and functionality was the Asus Aura Sync. Uh, that he was able to enable through Armory Crate. So he could go ahead and customize the lighting. Overall, man, Zachary, this gets a definite thumbs up for me. I like it. About the only thing I would recommend tweaking is, like I said, your memory configuration so that you could take advantage of that 6400 megahertz, 6400 MT. All right. I would agree with Sue Min. It's very clean and looks good. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get to our next build here. Uh, -da -dum -dum -dum. let me see. Uh, we got Oni, Hype Beast, SFF system, Robot Head. Okay, yep. Yeah. All right, we've got Golden Envy. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. And this system is Golden Envy, I believe, from Five Percent Gamer. Okay, got everything loaded up here. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> right off the bat, I'm um, already liking this vibe. We got black and we've got kind of gold, orange, and then we've got some purple in there, which is kind of cool. This is like a three-way color scheme. And then we've got blue. So actually four different colors in there, but they all work. So I'm already liking this. <laughs> Uh, John, I would definitely agree. So far, it looks like a pretty sweet build. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of T-Peg and look here. Okay, so here, interesting. Looks like we've got a little bit of a mod right there. To It looks like electrical tape that's on there. That's pretty interesting. So we've got a vertical mount. I'm not always the biggest fan of vertical mount, but I think the way that you've got this lined up, you're going for a more kind of cohesive look and feel that creates a symmetry between the top and the bottom. So I can see why you went that route. Um, I'm really liking the gold and the black and the purple. I think that's a really nice color combination. And then along with that accent for kind of, I think it's kind of blue purple uh, surrounding there. So I don't know if it's blue purple. Uh, is that RGB color? Oh, wide shot. That's pretty cool. I'm definitely liking that. That's that's pretty nice. Okay, so here we can take a closer look. That's very, very nice. So we got the vertical mount right there. We can see that we've got the board with a mono block. And then we can see how this all ties in. This is pretty cool in terms of the way that the actual lines are run through this system. So going from here into the res and the uh, excuse me into the radiator, you can see we've got our reservoir and pump right here, and then also kind of this symmetry and duality that you have between the top and the bottom, and then that closer mount for the vertical design. So that's pretty cool. It's got definitely a different look and feel to it, but I feel that. Normally, one of the reasons why I don't like a vertical mount is I think it creates too much distinction between the top and the bottom, and it breaks off some of the design aesthetic that the motherboard features. But I think in this design, you almost feel like they're a little bit more contiguous, and it's actually trying to create an overall kind of theme and a look that specifically is suited towards this type of uh, run and setup when you talk about the hardline builds. So I definitely think it works in this regard. And overall, it's a pretty cool setup. Um, let me go ahead and pull back out here and just see what we got on here. 
this is pretty impressive. There's definitely a lot of work that's been put in here. The bends are really nice. The layout's nice. Uh, the focus and the commitment to the actual color scheme as well is well done and well balanced as well. Oh, and here we can see we have a nice light up. I really like this. Oh, this is beautiful right here with just the accent lighting just on the rims right here for the fans, along with then that gold right there for the memory on the G, the looks like those are G Skill Royals with the blue, the gold, and then the purple. I I really like that. Yeah, that's that's a great looking system. Really nicely done. Definite gets a thumbs up from me. And that's a rarity because, like I said, normally I'm not the biggest fan of vertical mounts. So kudos on the overall creativity and the overall kind of ingenuity to be able to do something a bit different when it came to the overall layout and the overall execution. It's clean and it's well done. Um, yeah, Sue Min says, this looks good. Uh, John, we're going to go ahead and take a look here and see uh, what's on the submission form. I'll let you know and see how much the cost was. Um, Star Stardust932, is. let me see, uh, it's asking a question. So Stardust is asking about faster speeds. I, I can tell you, Stardust, all of our Z690 series motherboards, we have actually more memory validated than every other memory manufacturer out there. Uh, excuse me, um, motherboard manufacturer out there. Every single one of our blue boards, including the Z690-E, has already been QVL'd for upwards of 6,000 MT. It's not a, any issue. Now, you might not see the memory because maybe the memory, when it uh, was produced, came out after the board was already produced, but that doesn't mean the memory isn't supported. Um, for Corsair, you can check out their QBL that's directly listed on their webpage, and you'll probably find the board that's already listed there, but I can tell you that it's not an issue, whether you're talking about uh, 5,600, uh, 6,000, uh, those are already supported. Now, you noted 6,200. Um, 6,200 is going to be a little bit more variable, not because it's a limitation of the board, but because, again, it's a limitation of the IMC. Um, we feel pretty confident. We've tested hundreds of CPU samples and can tell you that generally about 80% plus of cases, the IMC, uh, regardless of the overall, well, density and IC do play a part, um, but generally you're going to find that you're going to be able to get to up or around 6,000 MT. Um, then once you get to kind of that range, there will be definite CPUs that could be able to reach even higher values. So like 62, 6,400 MT, but that's going to be more variable. There's no way to guarantee that. And it doesn't have anything to do with the board. It doesn't matter whether you bought the Dash E, whether you bought the Maximus Extreme. Um, the Apex could have a little bit of an edge just because the DRAM topology is a little bit more uh, tight because it's only a two DIM based board. But overall, it doesn't really matter on the board. Um, even everything down to like our Z690-PR entry have been validated for 6,000 MT. Um, it really comes down to, again, the quality of the IMC, which there's no way for you to guarantee that. So the, the best thing I can tell you is that you can be confident. We have the best overall memory interoperability and compatibility in the industry. And I feel pretty confident that you're gonna be able to run the memory that you want Keep in mind, you can't mix kits, so don't buy two kits expecting to think you're going to run high, um, high value MT standards because you can't in a four dim configuration, as I noted earlier, only in a two dim configuration. But in two dim configuration, I feel pretty confident that you could hit 6,000 MT, um, 6,200, 6,400 MT. There's a reasonable; it's not as much of a high likelihood. I'd probably say you'd be dropping down to maybe 60ish percentile. Um, at or around that kind of range, which is still okay, but it's still enough that maybe not all CPUs can hit it. So in that scenario, you may have to keep in mind that you might have to drop the memory divider and run a lower value because you could, your CPU couldn't support it, or you might have to kind of fine tune it and see if you could get it to reach that value. There's actually a post that I did about this in our PCDIY group if you're looking for more information, so make sure to check that out. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and bring up his submission form here. So let me see here. So. Uh, we've got 5% Gamer. Uh, this is not his first build. <laughs> it is actually a sponsored base build. Uh, the PC was built around the theme of a gaming room uh, so that it would blend in, but also at the same time stand out, which I would agree. I think this does blend in and it stands out. Three words to describe the build is dark and beautiful. Um, does the build have a name? It does. Golden Envy. Um, I think that's a really great name because it's got those nice gold accent to it. It's got that purple. It's got that black. It's got a rich kind of envious vibe to it. I think it's really nicely done. In terms of the core hardware, we've got a Crosshair 8 Dark Hero, uh, an ROG Strix 3080 that's water-cooled in there, uh, 5900X, 32 gigabytes of memory. That's all in an Inwin 925. He's got nine uh, Cirrus Loop fans from Inwin that are in there, 850-watt power supply also from Inwin, custom Yoka uh, PSU cables in there, and then two... Um, two terabyte Samsung uh, SSDs, uh, and then pretty much all EK hardware throughout there in terms of the custom loop configuration, $5,000 
uh, was the overall budget for this system. Uh, he was most proud of all the custom work he did, including the paint and the vinyl wrapping, which I would agree. Um, it looks like that's actually what you're talking about here is that the vinyl wrapping, that's what I'm seeing right here. So the vinyl wrap is probably on here and it's also on here. So that's pretty impressive because it is very clean and very well done. So kudos and thumbs up. That's just another layer to add something that really helps to kind of evolve and elevate the overall build. Is there anything you would like to change about the build? I'd like to swap all the EK black fittings for gold ones. Uh, interesting. So I don't know what was left in there that wasn't already gold fittings, um, but um, that's what you noted that you would want to go ahead and swap out. About two months worth of time. It's pretty much used for gaming. So Doom Eternal, Battlefield 5, and Jedi Fallen Order, some of his favorite games. And he absolutely loves the Strix 3080 card. It's an absolute beast. And along with the rest of the system, uh, allows him to run his games smoothly and enjoyably. Um, so overall, definite thumbs up for me. It's a great looking build. I'm a big fan of it. Um, I actually, the NVMe, I'm pretty sure when he said two, he didn't detail it specifically in there, but I'm pretty sure that's two, two terabyte um, M.2 based NVMe drives. All right. So a very, very cool build. Uh, and we've got one last build to be able to round things out. So let's go ahead and load this one up here, guys. Give me one sec. Uh, and this is from the one, the only, Sneff, one of my absolute favorite builders and modders in the game. Uh, one of the category that I consider a true masterclass builder who's always bringing, of course, uh, an aesthetic and a detail and an execution level that is at the best levels when it comes to PC DIY. So let's go ahead and take a look at what he got here with Dark Gold. Ooh, I'm feeling it. I'm already feeling it. When you said dark and then you said gold... I love it. You don't really see gold that often, although we just saw uh, gold Nemby there, which was fantastic to be able to see some gold. So I was happy to just be able to see that. So uh, let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. All right. So last up here, let's bring it home a snap. Oh, this is just beautiful. Um, again, we can just see the fit and the finish uh, of what you would expect from a masterclass builder like Snap. Um, this is beautiful. I love just the color schemes right here are on point where you have absolutely stunning balance between the gold, right? That gold yellow. And then from there, also the black and that black almost being all matted out. And then also credit to him in terms of always really doing some beautiful photography work to really be able to showcase his work here. But if you look, this is where the details are at. Yeah, John, I 100% agree with you. This is definitely whoa. I mean, look right here. You can see that you've got the gold accents right here on the block with just elevate kind of the build right and it really causes you to have that pop right where if these weren't there it would still look fantastic right but it just adds that little bit of it to extra detailing right which really helps to elevate it in the same way these beautiful cables right here look fantastic to pair along with the rest of the system right here um just these two vertical lines that you have with of course what probably looks like another custom uh distro that he's got that he's implemented in here oh some rg strix xf120 fans it looks like he's got implemented in there um but this is beautifully done this is just really clean um and I also love that it's not super heavy in terms of actually all the bends and the runs in here, right? You can see actually got some really cool symmetry going on here, very similar to what we had with Golden Envy, where we've got that kind of top and bottom vibe. Um, and then some really nice, just kind of complementary lines and accents going right here on the sides, down here, and then also over here. So let's go ahead and keep taking a look at, oh, oh, just, it just went up, just just went up just a little bit more right um when we when we have the lighting it looks so good already without the lighting and then you add the lighting and the lighting just kind of take it up um it just looks even better with the lighting the lighting just adds that little bit of just extra just panache to it right that just elevates it and for me one of the really things that i love right here is you can now see of course you've got this distro plate here the distro plate here right res uh, and then right here, right, where these three points of lighting help to just breathe in a little bit more lighting and give out this kind of total look and feel and vibe that just is fantastic. Um, so if you look right here, those aren't almost present and illuminated. And then, bam, he just drops this on you and it just looks fantastic. So um, I'm really a big fan of this. This is just this is gorgeous. It's another just true masterclass build. Um, this might be my favorite shot right here. It's fantastic. It's Wow, he's done so many fantastic builds. 
but I really like the way this looks. And people again know JJ is not a big fan of vertical mounts, but the vertical mount implementation done here is done really nicely. And I think it's done best when it's really part of the overall theme. It's really designed to kind of be a cohesive look and feel. And I think that's what he's achieved here is that he wanted to really be able to have a specific look and feel. And that was be able to be affirmed through the use of a vertical mount as opposed to going with a horizontal, which I generally prefer because I think it creates a little bit more depth and contrast and adds a look and feel um, that gives a little bit more of a kind of a balanced level. But this kind of approach here it's purposely like it, it's like it's almost like designed like it's supposed to be like this, right? This is how it's supposed to look. I would agree. Uh, definitely, it's beautiful and uh, really nice. How do purple work? Uh, how do people work on these? I wouldn't want to touch it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, it just depends, right? But uh, you know, that's what makes these systems um, so cool to look at, right? The cables are beautiful. The lighting is beautiful. Oh, that shot right there is great. Look at that, where you then now see the, the work that he's done right here. This is probably all custom work that he's done in terms of his CSC, CNC. So that's really, really nice. I love it. This is fantastic. This might have been one of my systems that I would have probably requested if I could get something like this, um, just because yellow... Uh, yellow, gold, kind of orange. Those are like my personal favorite colors. Um, and so um, I absolutely love this color color, color scheme combination. I look, it looks fantastic. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and bring up to the submission form here and we'll see what we got. So let's see what we got here. <clears throat> uh, hold on. Give me one second, guys, and I will bring up the submission form here. Uh, do I got it? Okay, there it goes. Sorry, I had to bring up the submission form. And... Okay, here we go. So I think that's a really great photo for this system because we get to see the work there that's um, in terms of that custom reservoir and kind of distro that we've got there. So there was overall no theme right? Uh, three words to describe the actual build is simple, clean, and balanced. Less RGB is sometimes better. I would agree. You don't have any RGB in here, right? You have a purposeful choice to go with a specific color, right? And that color working against black allows everything to be reinforced, right? You have the strong balance of a contrast color and then that base with black, which really is just a beautiful combination, right? Um, and it looks extraordinarily clean. A lot of people always say clean for white, and I disagree with that because I think that black and white can equally be clean. And it's really about what you're trying to achieve in terms of the look and the feel. Um, and this is a great representation of this because you see the cleanness of just how it's all laid out. Um, but then that beautiful contrast that you have within that secondary color. So does the build have a name? Dark Gold? Um, core, core hardware here, we've got pretty much flagship level hardware that we have. So this is a Ryzen 9 5900X on a Crosshair 8 Extreme, so our flagship AM4 board um, with the Strix 3080. And then we've got the ROG Strix XF120 fans. That's all inside of a Corsair 5000D Airflow Edition. Uh, we've got 32 gigabytes of uh, 4000 MT memory from Team Group. Um, and then we've got two one terabyte um, Z440 based M.2 SSDs. I believe those are the PCI Gen 4 based uh, M.2 SSDs. Cable mods, pro cables, um, and then all custom uh, EK water cooling hardware. And then uh, the distrovar, the, excuse me, the distro and the reservoir that you see here. So the distro and the reservoir, all those are custom by SNEF that he's done in terms of his shop and setup through CNC. Um, no budget was defined. What aspect uh, is he most proud of is all the little details like the gold screws on the water block. That's the first thing I called out, right? I think that looks fantastic, as well as those screws that were on the distros. The simple X pattern for extreme. Now, how, that's why he's a masterclass builder, right? It's extreme motherboard. And then the X is a subtle reinforcement for it being an extreme board. I love that. That's just, just awesome, right? And uh, the CPU and the GPU block and the LED lighting, right? Where you've got that little LED lighting right there. Yeah, that's beautiful. It just looks fantastic. Uh, is there anything that we change about the build? No, but as always, we have something to change to, or, or to do better, right? So there's always something you can think about, right? Sure. Um, 
uh, length of time, about 50 to 60 hours uh, with all the distro work in terms of the design. Um, and then the system is pretty much used for gaming, Lost World, Destiny 2, Rainbow Six Siege, and some VR gaming. Uh, it's overall his favorite feature. Uh, for this one, he actually was, uh, he normally actually says Armory Crate, and he loves the design of our hardware, as I know that from Sneff. Sneff is a huge supporter and been a big fan of Asus for a really long time. But he actually really was a big fan of the uh, XF120 fans, maybe his favorite fan ever. Um, very quiet, great performance, and a, and a great aesthetic. Um, so overall, um, he's a really big fan of these fans, and he thinks that they worked fantastic for this water-cold system. So um, thumbs up, man. Sneff another another great job there oh what do i think that it would cost um this system it's hard because i don't know what snef uh charges there in terms of the time and labor i mean time and labor um definitely could be one of the most expensive parts of the system um you know if everything was able to be purchased conservatively at msrp and then you also still account for the custom work i would say this is probably got to be um conservatively in the range of probably I'd say about 7500 USD would probably be my thoughts something like around that it could be it could be more but uh it's hard to know you didn't have a budget that was defined in that um I'm assuming this was a probably a client-based build so somebody reached out to him to build this for them um but sniff as always man the hat comes off for you and uh, a definite thumbs up another fantastic and stunning build so guys uh, let me go ahead and just run through those images one last time so we can just take a look from start to finish here dark gold another just fantastic build Yep. Oh, you know, uh, interesting about the only, the, oh, oh, I just noticed one thing. The bummer would have been is that it doesn't have the dim.2 installed and that would be a tricky thing to be able to install the dim.2. That, okay. That's the one niggle that I'll give to it, but you know what? That's okay. Um, that's about the only thing uh, that, that that's a little bit of a challenge right there, but otherwise uh, fantastic board, man, fantastic build and uh, awesome setup. So very, very cool. Um, thanks everybody for joining us here on the stream as always. Um, hopefully you guys are ending out your week on a positive and productive footing, staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, enjoy your Friday night and have a great weekend. You guys take care and take it easy. And again, if anybody has any questions um, and we didn't get to be able to answer them here in the stream, feel free to go ahead and check out the Asus PCDIY group. Feel free to go ahead and tag me there and I'll do my best to go ahead and follow up with you when I can there. So with that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day.